So yeah, thank you for joining us today um, for Instagram Augmented Reality for Beginners. Um, this is a beginner course, so you know anyone can join. You don't have to have any type of experience to start off in this course. Um, we're going to hold your hand and really get you started and show you why it's cool and why you should be doing this if you aren't already. And so my name is Casey Pollock. Uh, my company's name is Near Future Marketing. And from there, I created this meetup, AR Today. So the meetup has been around for a little while now. Um, this is our first time <coughs> switching to virtual. And from here on out, we're going to switch completely to virtual. So I'm really excited to show you guys this new format. Um, we don't have any sponsors or anything. It's just me behind all of this uh, as it was before. But now I'm putting on this show as well uh, online. So you know, if you want to volunteer and help me out, I would definitely appreciate that. The more screens, the more computers we have on the back end, the better. And so just some uh, brief history about me and the meetup. Um, so I created my first Apple Watch app. That was my first app ever in 2015. Um, in 2016, I moved to California and started attending and volunteering at different meetups on meetup.com. Um, so that's how I really learned about Meetup is when I moved to California, I said, hey, where are the other people that do iPhone stuff? Uh, and from there, I you know, would start showing up to these different Meetups and met a lot of cool people. And from there, I started volunteering at different Meetups so I can meet even more cool people. So definitely uh, don't underestimate the power of volunteering in Meetups because you never know who you're going to meet. You never know who you're working with. Um, and you never know, you know, those presenters who come through and and present, uh, you never know what type of cool presenters you'll get in the long run. So definitely check out the volunteer page. Uh, I created my first AR app in 2017. Um, so before I really knew what augmented reality was, I already could tell that my generation, especially people were obsessed with apps that use the camera. Um, so I, for my next app, I had started with Apple Watch and like some sticker apps here and there, but for my next app, I was for certain that I wanted to make something that used the camera. And uh, lo and behold, kind of that same year or the, like the next year, really, uh, that's when Apple unveiled ARKit, which allows you to make AR applications on your iPhone natively, a uh, really, really powerful app. So that's where I got started with that. My first app was The Big Sky Above Us. It was like a musical augmented reality album. So you can listen to a bunch of songs that I made and uh, kind of explore the solar system and learn about the planets while you listen to what each and every planet and moon sounds like. Um, and then I created this meetup on my birthday in 2018. So it was just kind of like a gift to myself. I just wanted to do something cool, create a little community. And I figured, you know, it's my birthday. Why not today? So that's when this all started. Um, I really wish I had kind of celebrated the two year birthdays that have passed since we started this meetup with you guys. Um, but maybe definitely now we can do something virtual. Um, and then, of course, you know, we, this was an in-person meetup, so that's what I really wanted to drive here um, is that we're moving to this online format. Now we can support up to 10,000 people in one call, so this is going to be really cool. Uh, this is just the first of many, many, many. Um, I'm excited to be doing this again with you guys, um, but you can see we come from, you know, we had a lot of fun, and I just wanted to put some of these pictures in here because we did have a lot of cool meetups already. Um, and we had a lot of cool experiences, you know, when the world was a lot different. So I think right now, especially just looking back on some of those pictures, um, really bring back some cool memories if you've been with me for the long run. Um, so I do appreciate anybody who ever showed up to any of these past in-person meet meetups, um, but definitely, you know, invite your friends going forward in the future. Uh, more and more people can definitely join us now um, that we have unlimited space. And so again, this was at PubNub in San Francisco. Um, those other pictures were in San Mateo. Um, this was at UC Berkeley. I had a really cool experience, you know, through the meetup as well. Um, they invited me to UC Berkeley and I taught their students uh, two, two different classes. It was really, really cool, really exciting opportunity. But again, you know, no one in that class had any experience. And I, that's where I really like to show people that, hey, this is really cool. And hey, it's also easily possible for you too. So. Now, I'm, I'm excited for you if you are in this meetup today. Um, we will be covering how to create Instagram augmented reality filters and why they are relevant because I do think, you know, I, I don't want to teach. There's there's a lot of waste of time technologies and uh, platforms out there, to be honest, when it comes to augmented virtual reality um, and just technology in general. But definitely, um, I think I, I only want to put forward the truth. I want to put, you know, the biggest, the best platforms best knowledge uh, on display. So that way when you come to these meetups, 
um, you're really, you know, learning something valuable. And if you attend it in the past, you know, I, I think people really got that value. Um, as a programmer myself, it was really easy for me to teach people how to, you know, program and how to make some basic code and how to stitch together those 3D models. So again, thank you for being here, um, especially if you've been here before. But if you're new, you know, again, welcome. Um, I'm really excited for you and this learning opportunity you've started. <laughs> And so that just brings me back to that point. You know, again, we were AR today um, going for these online sessions. Now it's AR today online. So it's, there's going to be a lot more that comes with that. There's going to be all sorts of recorded courses. There's going to be updated swag gear. Uh, there's going to be lots of free assets, lots of, you know, just free 3D models, free PowerPoints and PDFs if you're into that kind of thing. But definitely, you know, all the different things that you would need to create AR experiences. I definitely want to give those things away and just make them available um, through my company and through this meetup. And so the reason I decided to talk about Instagram augmented reality filters for beginners today um, is because they're always fun. I mean, just starting off here, we have three different scenarios, but definitely each one of these people look like they're having fun just by looking at their camera. So, you know, these things are always fun and I think it's a really great way to get started with augmented reality um, because there's some really boring things you can do, but this is always going to be fun. Uh, next, I think it's definitely what I would call hyper creative. Um, there's just so much potential when you work with computers spatially, when you're mapping things to your face or mapping things to the room, um, when you're controlling a game, you know, by blinking as he's doing. Um, there's there's just so many creative things that I feel like, you know, as humans, we've never thought about, or if you thought about it, it was considered abstract art. And here we are today where technology is fusing that abstract art with, you know, reality. And I just think that's, it's creating this new realm of creativity in itself. And definitely it's the ultimate marketing tool. I think if you're a company, if you're a business, um, if whatever you're doing, if you can create a Instagram or Facebook effect for, for what you're doing, um, you definitely will see a marketing hype around that. I think, you know, it's just a great way for your customers to interact with your products um, indirectly or directly. So you can see here like the Starbucks cup, um, they've mapped it to an actual little Starbucks building for Christmas. And then they also have kind of like the snow effect here in that bottom right corner where they have the snowflakes and the world, world words twirling around the cup. Um, up here at the top, we have Dobby from Harry Potter. He's kind of break dancing down there. Um, this one is a which Simpsons character are you? And this one I think was from Pepsi, but it says turnt, not burnt. Um, and it has some little burgers dancing. So definitely, even if you have a little burger shack, you know, there's some type of creative marketing tool effect that you could create with this tool, basically. Um, so there's so much potential just with this Instagram, Facebook platform. Um, and that's why, again, you know, I want it to really put the, the best technologies up front. Um, we will be covering some more things in the future. This isn't the only thing we're going to cover. We're going to cover everything, everything when it comes to augmented reality. But for today, we're going to stick to this Instagram stuff. So let's move on. Um, and this is what I meant. Perfect. <laughs> I don't even know which order the slides are in, but um, basically when it comes to augmented reality, there are different types of devices and starting from the very, very basic, most basic device you could have would be, I would say, the Pepper Ghost effect. So if you've seen like the Coachella uh, concerts where they brought different artists back to life or any of those uh, concerts where they brought someone back to life, that was probably the Pepper Ghost effect. Um, it's basically kind of like a invisible see-through mirror that kind of reflects only certain light and in that way it creates that hologram for the crowd, um, but definitely it's not something you could carry around. It's not something that you can be mobile with. From there, we have our older phone. So this would really be anything made, I'd say, before like 2012. Um, any phone before then or 2016, um, around those two times, um, basically, uh, if, it don't, if they would only have, you know, QR code, image tracking, they would have three degrees of freedom because the, the sensors in that phone just aren't sensitive enough to actually accurately track where you are in the room. Um, and of course, they have text messaging and email. And the reason I highlighted that there is because as you move up in this chart, you, um, each device has all of the things in the devices below it. So as we move on to our flagship phones, you'll see 
that it definitely is going to have text messaging and email and advanced manufacturing capabilities and active developer community. Um, but what's really important is that energy efficient machine learning. And that's why you have to have a little bit more of a modern phone. Um, as we've moved forward in time, chips have gotten smaller and smaller and smaller. You know, the phones may still look the same, but the chips themselves are getting extremely small, almost down to the molecule size. Um, so definitely we're fitting more parts in the same body. And as a result, you know, we're getting more and more powerful devices that can do things that you never believed something that skinny could do. Um, moving up to the top here, we have our AR glasses. And so AR glasses are actually here now. Um, it's been, you know, not a long, long time coming. It's been a very long time coming if you want to go far that back. But definitely, you know, we have our, our AR headsets now and they they are here. But I think what's really important is that they need to have all of these features. Um, so definitely eye tracking is important. Voice recognition is important. Hand recognition is a key. As you can see from this one, he's kind of like pulling out the email and then swiping it away. Um, near eye display obviously is a headset, um, but fashionable. I think this is kind of the limitation of our AR glasses right now. We have a few here and there, um, but none of them are really too fashionable. And that's where I think, you know, a lot of the companies, the bigger companies working on these things um, in the long term, we, we all know that, you know, they're rumored to be working on different devices um, or they've announced that they're working on different devices. And I think we just need to see how fashionable they are before they really can catch on um, as well as affordable. Um, but definitely untethered. This is where it all comes together is that we want to have all of the stuff, text messaging, uh, six degrees of freedom tracking. So the ability to walk around the room, object recognition and wear something fashionable. Um, all while being untethered. So all while walking around the office or walking outside, wherever you are, I think that is, you know, the key. Um, that's the the end goal, basically. And it's it's halfway there. So that's why I started this meetup. I'm mean, really excited for this point. Um, and a lot of the technology I've been working on is aimed at this point. So, you know, stick around. You're going to learn a lot. Um, and when you look at this stuff, when you look at augmented reality and people ask me all the time, you know, how, what do you see it affecting? How do you what industries do you see it affecting? And really, it's it's literally everything. It's the entire world. Um, so we have construction here. We have, you know, agriculture. We have healthcare. We have astronomy or science. We have mapping, GPS, gaming, anything you can think of. Seriously, it can be changed and augmented by augmented reality. And that's why, you know, whether you're getting in from Facebook and Instagram or Snapchat or you're coming through the HoloLens or maybe the iPhone, doesn't really matter. I just really suggest that you get into AR as long as you're on a major platform that's going to last over the next three to five years. I think, you know, that's the only place you need to be. As long as you're working on AR, you're, you're in a good place um, because you can do anything with it. And don't let anyone tell you that you can't, you know, work on a construction AR app or a really, really boring agriculture AR app because anything is possible and it can be really, really exciting. And so this is a video I recorded in 2018. Um, so I actually got invited to F8 in 2018. So this is Facebook's like big conference. And I believe this may have been when they actually kind of launched the AR stuff. So I was actually a part of the beta. I was doing, I was, you know, using Spark AR before it was even called Spark AR. Um, and it was, it was really cool, but they, this was actually the pass that they gave us that year. And I'll replay that video one more time. Um, and basically that pass actually was a map of the entire venue where the event was held. So it was really cool that they gave us this pass and then we could whip out the Facebook app, point at the pass and have a real map of this crazy huge venue in San Jose. Um, so moving on from that one, I always like to cover this slide because it really breaks down how this all works. I think a lot of people see AR, it's like this magical technology. Um, but basically there's a strong computer vision. So there's AI, artificial intelligence, and it's watching every single frame, 60 frames per second, and it's analyzing each one and actually figuring out, hey, you know, where are these points of interest? Where, where are the chairs? Where are the tables? Where's the floor? Um, and it's just really good at doing that one thing. And as it goes around labeling that data, that's what we add on to. We say, oh, okay, now that we know where the face is, let's put some goofy goggles on that face. And that, that's all that's happening here. It's, you know, it really is the most complicated technology in the world. 
But at the same time, you know, our, our phones, our technology is getting a lot better. So the things that used to blow our mind are really, really accessible now um, with with no code or anything. And that's the cool part. And yeah, so Spark AR, as I said, it's this is what we're going to be learning today. Um, this is Facebook and Instagram's app. You can download it on Mac or Windows and basically start creating uh, augmented reality filters. Um, directly through that app. And then another app I would always recommend is Blender, um, and it's used to animate and model 3D assets. So this is the one that you would download and actually work on, you know, animating this 3D dinosaur or actually sculpting this 3D dinosaur. You would do all of that in Blender. And then once he's done, you drag and drop him directly into Spark AR and you could have a dinosaur Jurassic Park filter. Um, and as you can see here, you can make games with it. There's, there's seriously so much you can do. This is a beginner course. Again, um, I'm not the ultimate Instagram expert. Um, basically, I focus on iPhone um, and I program and stuff, and I, it's just a lot more complex. So I definitely wanted to push this technology because it's easier to get into, um, but don't think that I have all the answers here. I'm just here to get you started. Um, I do have a, quite a few filters posted, but you know, I, I definitely think anyone can can get better than me, basically. <laughs> and so there's some interesting links. Um, all of these slides and everything we do today, so the entire lesson, um, the demo files, whatever we create, will be available on my website. And so that's nearfuture.marketing. You can go there. And once you come to my website, you go to that top right corner, Augmented Reality Today, and you just scroll down. And here's today's event. So if you got lost somehow, you could tap back into the event. Um, and here's the free assets that are going to be included for today. So you can click that. It's a public Google Drive. And basically, I have a PowerPoint there already. Um, and then we're just going to put anything else um, that we can put in there. So that's that. Again, go to my website to get that slide and any additional information. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. Um, so let's close out all of this stuff. And so if you've never downloaded Spark AR before, I guess I should start there actually. Um, you just go to sparkar.facebook.com. And so here's the web page. You can see all of their fancy marketing. Um, but yeah, definitely, you know, you can start creating at any level. You don't have to be have any skills to get started, you just come to this website, tap that download button, and once you've downloaded it, you should see this logo here somewhere on your computer, um, and we can go ahead and launch that. Now, when you launch Spark AR, it does require a Facebook account. Uh, let's see if I can minimize this. It's a little distracting. We'll turn off my camera too. Let's see. Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right, so yeah, once you um, actually launch Spark AR, um, basically you're gonna see this really cool menu here. And this is really cool to me because again, I started this when it was in beta. So when I started using this app, there were literally just little three demo apps, three demo effects that you could try out. Um, and they were cool, but they were, some of them had like a lot of code and it was not a language I've done for So it was really, really complicated to me. Um, but now anyone can actually get started um, all you need to do is download Spark AR and they have all of these templates here for you to follow. So you can see you can make a 3D animated poster. You can make a animated background. So your background could be different than it actually is. You could actually create a world object, meaning that you could just put a 3D model in the world. You could wear face decoration like glasses. There's these color filters, which are kind of those traditional Instagram filters. There's the face mask. I'm sure it's, all of you have seen that before. There's makeup, so if you own a makeup brand, you could definitely, you know, build out makeup effects of all of your different uh, lip lip tones or blush, you know, different types of makeup, and basically actually market that directly in the app. So that's a really cool thing that a lot of bigger makeup companies are doing. But even if you're smaller, you know, you could take that time, work with an artist, um, or just you know, spend the time and learn how to make it, and you could really match all of your colors to the app and have a free way for people to try on your product. So I definitely recommend that. Um, this object reveal is pretty cool. It kind of like goes into a hole, which is a little bit harder of an effect to create from scratch. Uh, the neck decoration, the head decoration for hats, 2D stickers, 3D stickers, eye color. 
you guys get the idea. There are way too many options now. Um, so today I think we should get started with a head decoration because it's pretty easy. Um, so we'll go ahead and tap that one. And when you tap that, you'll get this screen and it says you can customize. Oh, so this is actually a new feature um, that's really cool. I would consider it advanced. So we're going to skip that for today. Um, and let's make this full screen. And so welcome to Spark AR basically. So starting from this top right corner here, um, you'll see we have our live video feed. So this is the output video. This is what would actually be seen in the app. And coming to the top of that window where it says iPhone 8, if you tap there, you can actually change the phone to be anything else. So it could be the iPhone X and you'll see those proportions. You can switch to an Android device like the Pixel or the Galaxy here. Uh, which has the same proportions, but you get the idea is that you can really test out this video frame and you can really stretch it and make it as big as you want. You can really flip it, make it horizontal, rotate it back to vertical. You could switch to the back camera, but let's switch back to the front camera. Cool. Um, to the left of that, we have this big open menu here, um, and this is kind of like our, our full camera view. So you'll see here, this shows us the entire video, but behind that we have the phone and basically the camera is projecting that, that display onto our live video feed. So what it's really doing is just cropping out only the video that's the size of the phone camera that you've kind of selected. Um, so it's really cool how they visualize that because a lot of other applications don't show you the phone and give you that understanding that it is just a, a video feed mapped to 3D objects. Um, cool. So coming to the far left here, <clears throat> let's, um, this, this is our workspace here. So you can see we, again, we have our device, which is highlighted in blue now. Under that, we have our camera. We have our focal distance, which is just kind of like the length from the camera to, the, to our subject. Um, and then from there, we have our lighting, directional light, but the face tracker, this is what's really cool and important. Um, Facebook has made it really easy to do things like tracking faces without any experience, without any code. Um, they just have these different kind of drag and drop objects that you can drag and drop in and create a really cool effect. And that's what they've done here with this template is they've already dragged and dropped them all in there for you. Um, so literally you just come to this drag here and delete me. And this is our actual hat. And so if I wanted to pause this video, go to the far left again and we'll tap here we'll pause and so now I can pause this video and I can actually come over here and you can see that I could actually make changes in real time to our 3D objects so I can slightly adjust it I can you know rotate it I could rescale it here if I wanted to maybe make it a lot wider you know obviously it doesn't fit at that size but it's really, really easy if you've ever used any type of 3D software. Um, it's really easy to use this software. And if you've never used any 3D software, then again, it's really easy to get started learning. Um, so from there, we have what are called occluders. Um, so I can go ahead and explain this. This is essentially like an invisible object to represent where your head would be. So normally when you're wearing a hat, um, obviously this hat is a little see-through. Let me unpause it here. But when you're wearing a hat, um, it needs to kind of like fit to your head. And this is a digital hat. So if it's, you know, it's mapping to a, again, a 2D camera um, and we're representing the hat in 3D. So to kind of cover up where like his ears would be, if he, if he turned his head to the left or right, as you saw there, he's turning his head, um, we have what's called an occluder. And that basically is an invisible object with that invisible texture that will automatically kind of crop that 3D object around our invisible shape. Um, and that way, you know, we can kind of map out exactly where ears at least should be. And that way, if something is going through the ear, we could actually represent that without it looking like it's uh, just kind of going through its head. So that's a quick explainer of occluders. They're kind of confusing, but they're actually really that simple. It's just an invisible object um, that can basically crop out those 3D objects for your TV video feed. Um, so if you wanted to make a change to this hat here, um, there's one more thing I want to show you. Let's come down to the right side. And let's pause. 
So yeah, back down at the bottom here, we have our materials. Um, and so basically this is the material that's being applied to the hat. Should be, but it may not be. I didn't, again, I didn't make this template. So um, let's play with this material and see what it affects. Yeah, and it's not, oh, it's our occlusion material. Duh, I should have read it. Yeah, so again, this is invisible, so but it is actually affecting our hat. Um, but basically at the bottom here, you can tap add asset and you can import different assets. So you could create a material, which would be like a texture, um, basically an image that you could load onto a 3D model. You could create a script, you could create an animation sequence, an audio playback controller for playing audio, um, an animation playback controller for kind of controlling those animations um, and different other things as well. Um, so for today, I think we're just going to get started on the really most basic template and just go ahead and delete this. So you tap that delete me under the face tracker. And let me if I can undo that again. So we're at the face tracker here. And then we're going to go to the drag here and right under that drag here is the delete me. We'll just tap delete me or delete <laughs> on your keyboard. And so from there, now you can see our guy does not have a hat. He is a little sad. Doesn't have his hat anymore. And if we come up to this top left again, um, we can actually switch this video so it doesn't have to just be our guy. It could be our girl, it could be this girl, it could be that girl, this guy, this guy too, and we can't forget about this guy. So you see Facebook has automatically, they've already included that kind of diversity and, you know, and inclusion. Basically, they're trying to make sure that basically we have a wide data set uh, to test your filters on. So different filters are going to work differently on different people. You know, obviously, if someone has a lot more hair than someone or if they're already wearing a hat, um, the hat filter may not work quite the same for them. So let's go ahead and get a new hat and then we can see how that looks on everybody else. Uh, so we'll go back to our internet browser here. And if you don't know where to get 3D models, I would highly recommend CG Trader. Um, it's a website I go to a lot. I spend way too much money on this website, um, but it's only because their prices are, are pretty cheap, you know, compared to a lot of other websites I've seen. Uh, CG Trader has really good prices and you can really search for anything. If you just go up to the top here, um, you can start off. Maybe you just want to look at animals. You click and you know, here's a little dash hound. Here's an elephant. You know, very quickly you could find stuff. More importantly, they have tons of free assets as well. And I think especially if you're making, you know, free Instagram filters, uh, just come to CG Trader, tap free. You will find some really cool stuff here, sometimes animated. Um, but yeah, come here and you can download a lot of cool stuff. For me, I already have bought way too much stuff. So we'll go to my purchases and I will locate some hats. Yeah, and they, they often have uh, sales as well. And that's another reason why I like CG Trader. A lot of times they'll have like a flash sale or a holiday sale and you'll get like 50% off. So a lot of these models I got for a good price, relatively speaking. Here's our hat pack. So I will download that and let's go ahead and try out the uh, let's do our safari helmet here and our Santa hat maybe. Yeah, and I'll just put this on my desktop. Um, I'm going to Santa hat too while we're here. Cool. So these are .fbx files. Uh, so Spark AR takes a couple different types of 3D files. And so while I'm here in my purchases, maybe I can show you some other file types. Um, so it takes that .fbx. Um, .obj it should take as well. Um, but .dae, which is a Collada file, that won't take. Um, there's just different files. I can post up like a little cheat sheet later um, in, our, in our free assets section. But definitely, you know, you always want to confirm the files that you're you're spending money on or, or finding. And again, that's why I highly recommend Blender because if you get Blender, you can easily import and export um, those assets into any format that you need it. So download Blender, it's free. Download Spark AR, it's free. Um, and come to CG Trader, they have lots of cool stuff. Um, let's hop back into Spark AR. And again, we'll go down to our add asset, or if you want it, I'll just show you this really quickly. You go to your desktop and just drag and drop it in. And there you go. That's our Safari helmet. 
And so it has a bit of a weird name because I didn't rename it when we downloaded it. But this is the actual 3D file here, this cube. Um, this one here is our texture and this is our other texture. So there's our material and then there's our actual image texture. The image goes to the material. The material is here. And so we could manipulate that material. We could change it from standard to maybe physically based, um, which I can kind of show you that once we, this guy is wearing it. So let's bring in our hat. We'll grab our cube and we'll drag it to that drag here under our face tracker and just let it go right there. And you can see already we have added our guy. And I think I might have messed up my hat. So let's actually delete it. Um, I just wanted to show you guys that, but let's delete the hat and bring it back in really quickly um, just to keep this fluid without teaching you too much at once. Cool. So again, we have our cube. We have our face tracker at the top with our drag here. And so we're going to grab our cube and drag it to our face tra tracker right on top of the drag here. And this time you can see that the texture is already stuck to it. Um, so all we need to do is rescale this. So let me zoom out and you can see we have our hat. It looks pretty good, but it's way too big. And remember, I described that occluder to you earlier, that, that invisible object that can kind of crop out our other 3D objects. So this is actually a good example. You can see right where it's cutting off now. You can see that we have something in there that's kind of cutting out a hole where his head should be. So um, all we need to do is tap our hat and we can keep editing that while he's working on it, while he's wearing it. Um, and let's just resize it. So again, we can do 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.7. And I would always recommend keeping this cubed, keeping all of these uh, scales the same. That way the original model, you know, it keeps those proportions as you scale it down in, in Spark AR. And so you can see it's still too big. And so the right number is going to be 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0.2. Oops. 0.2, not 2. Cool. And so now you can see our hat looks like a lot closer to fitting. Um, earlier we edited it, so we moved that hat up. So let's bring it back down. Um, so there's two ways I could do this, um, but I personally might just go ahead and pause it and just drag it down. So you can see it kind of fits. And then let's go ahead and drag it forward. And then let's drag it down a little bit more. And right there, it looks like it really, really fits. So now we can unpause this. And look at that. We have a new hat. We don't have that invisible blue one anymore. And one thing I want you to notice is, again, remember that occluder? So this hat fits him. But you know, it may not fit everyone exactly the same, and it just barely fits him. I mean, this is like a tiny hat on him. So let's switch our video. Maybe let's try my built-in camera. So let me turn on my camera. And here's the hat on top of my fro. Yeah, you can see the hat fits me pretty good. Good enough, but that's something you'll notice once you actually start taking a look at these Instagram filters now that you're learning how to make them. Um, you'll go to Instagram, you'll check out different filters, and you'll you'll look at them and you'll start analyzing them really, really deeply. And you'll realize like, hey, that's, that's not perfect. That's not like a perfect filter. And that's because they're not made by Instagram. They're made by creators. They're made by people like you. So, you know, there's no such thing as a perfect Instagram filter. Um, Facebook and Instagram don't have the best AR tracking technology. Um, so definitely, you know, their effects overall are extremely great. They have an extremely great distribution platform, but it's not going to like be perfectly mapped to every single person in the world. And that's why it's just important to test it before you, you launch. So again, you come over to this video feed and it looks like it mostly fits her mostly fits her, but if we want it, we can definitely, you know, come in and resize this a little bit because it's it's pretty tiny again. So again, we come back to the middle, not on our iPhone screen, but to the middle. And we'll tap that hat and we don't have to pause it. We can just maybe bump it up to 0.22. I'll make it 20% bigger. And that's okay. We do 0.25. I think that's going to really be the limit ish we'll find out though now this is really there's not an exact number for every single thing or there is but you know you're the one discovering it so again it kind of fits her but it probably looks better on someone with less hair 
Um, but again, we can maybe bring it down now that we've made it bigger. So let's just pause, bring it down, and we'll, while we're in the same frame, let's go ahead and, oh, well, actually, yeah, we have to unpause the switch. Yeah, I think that's, that's really good. So that's good enough. Once you've basically edited this and got this exactly how you want it, um, this is what I was trying to do earlier. So you could come here to the material, our Safari Helmet Zero, and we could actually change that material um, if we wanted to. So we could come up to the top and change the shader from standard to physically based, and that's going to really change how it looks and how it reflects the lighting. So you can see now there's this shininess on it. Um, so maybe it's a harder material. That would be the right, you know, shader type to apply. Now let's go back to our texture. And where did we go? Our material, sorry, that's that's a word that's kind of used differently across different applications, but our material is what we're editing right now. Um, and again, you could change the shader type, which can really affect how things look. Um, but let's leave ours at standard for now. Cool. And once you've kind of composed your your effect basically so this is this is good enough this is done you know people can still have a lot of fun with just this hat believe it or not um so once you've finished all you would need to do um there's two things you could do you can test it on your device which i can quickly show you and then after that you can export and upload so let me grab this iphone cord here and with this i can uh, basically show you guys what the actual iPhone app looks like. So one second, I'm just going to connect all the dots here. And again, if you have any questions, please go ahead and type them in the chat box. Um, I do have a live Q&A on the side. Um, again, it's just me today, no big team. So uh, not too many questions, but definitely if you have any questions, go ahead and type them in and I'll answer them. Quick time. Oh, that's right. One second. Yeah, again, this is a <laughs> wasn't the smoothest transition. Here we go. Stop that one. Perfect. And it's a new movie recording. OK. All right, so we tap that and then and I'm repainting my room in the background. I will switch to Casey's iPhone. And perfect. So this is my phone. And so basically you just need to go to your app store. And you can search Spark AR. And so that's it. You just download the app. <laughs> this Spark AR player on your iPhone is not going to allow you to make filters but it will allow you to test the ones that you create on your phone. So let's go ahead and open mine. And once you have the app open, all you need to do is, so run your filter. So first, yeah, let's test the filter that we are testing out here. So we're gonna come back to our Spark AR screen and we're gonna go to this bottom left corner. You can see now it's actually lit up because it knows that my phone's on and the Spark AR app is open. So the app has to be open on your phone. The app has to be open on your desktop. And then you send it over through the cord. You can also send it wirelessly with an Instagram link. But once you send it over, here we are using my iPhone 11 Pro. And now I'm testing out that hat. So you can see again, it fits me pretty good. I can take a picture like that. And um, from there, I can also flip the camera and I could apply it to like other people. So let me find a picture of anyone let's see here we had some people in our slide and i'll just quickly show you there you go you know it's now working on the front and the back camera and you might have to get closer for these people but you get you get the idea is that just like that i'm able to test it on a higher quality camera and confirm that it works on both the front and the back so this is a filter um you guys can't see me right now this is a filter <laughs> And so basically, um, definitely, this is the fastest, quickest way to create anything um, in augmented reality that you can publish to the public. Um, so once you've kind of tested it and verify that it works really well, you would go down to this export and upload. And here it's going to do a really quick check to make sure that it's, this 
effect would fit on all of the different platforms. They do do some compression for you, so it does make it a little bit better on the end. Um, but you can see here, iOS, Android, older Android. So they're, they're definitely trying to get your, your work to as many people as possible. And then that's again why I'm telling you, don't use all these other guys necessarily. Um, definitely take a look at Spark AR because they are really ensuring that the technology, the foundation is there um, for you to really get out your creativity. Um, so you would just go ahead and upload that and basically publish a new effect, or you could update an existing effect, which I need to do. And so we'll upload it, and if it doesn't happen in like two seconds, um, you know, two to ten seconds, then there might be something wrong. I would suggest canceling it and just redoing it because I've seen that happen quite a few times. Um, but this is our online Spark AR hub, and so I'm just making sure you guys can see my desktop. But once you're on this hub here, um, all you would need to do is select the platform that you want to publish to. An example, Instagram. You can see it would publish to my near future dot marketing Instagram. So follow us on Instagram. Um, and then you would give it a name. So we can call this one Safari Hat. We could give it some categories. Um, for things that are like face effects, I've found I've already been through this review process. So just tap selfies unless it really does apply to some of this other stuff, like maybe games. Um, but if it's just a selfie hat, um, just tap selfie. It's not cosmetic. It's not the other ones. It's just the selfie. So just a heads up um, to help you guys get your stuff approved. Um, definitely max out these keywords. So I would do something like Safari, you know, Jungle, uh, Expedition, you know, whatever you want to do, Explorer, just anything to help people find your, your effect on accident. Um, from there, you can actually set an owner. And so if you have, you know, other Facebook pages, you could publish those to those pages. You publish it to your personal account. Um, and you can also pick which Instagram account, which for me, it's just my business one linked here. Um, the requirements to submit, you definitely need to capture a 15 second video. And that's why we downloaded that Spark AR app, because once you download that app, I can here maybe quickly show you that one again. Let's bring quick time back. And so again, well, new movie recording. Sorry, this is such a process each time. Let's see. There we go. All right. And in here, we have our Spark AR player. So let's say, you know, I just finished this. I'm super excited, but I don't have any friends. You know, it's everybody's working remote right now. So I'm obviously not going to go out of my way to get people to record this. Um, you can send them a link though, so that's cool. Um, but this is what you can do is you can come in, you can take a picture um, that's going to save to your photos. And then that's you just directly upload that here um, to the upload the image. And now that's basically going to create the icon and then you capture a 15 second video. So again, back on our Spark AR mobile app, you press and hold. <laughs> you record that. And then basically you have your recording as well. And then you just come back again to our Spark AR hub and upload that. And so those are required because real people do review these. Um, so you upload those, you add a publication date, um, you give a brief explanation of how it works. You know, just this is a cool Safari hat, put this on to instantly feel like you're in the jungle. Um, those are the types of things I say on mine and they, they always accept that. So um, that's cool. And then you just submit it and it's really easy. I think the only rules are just you can't have things um, that are controversial. So, you know, I, I'm going to I don't even need to explain what those are. Um, basically, if it's something that is offensive to people, you know, it's definitely not going to get approved. If it's something that you can't show at school necessarily, um, if it involves drugs or alcohol, you can't do that one. Um, but there's a lot of cool things that you can do with it. Um, so definitely, you know, spend some time working on that. And I think, you know, when you get through that review process, which is usually pretty like a day or two days, um, you know, you're going to have some fun there. Um, so again, CG Trader is where you would get those assets. Spark AR is where you work on it all. Um, and let's see how we are on time. We have 15 more minutes. I don't think we have too many questions yet. So yeah, let's just keep going. Um, so let's create a new filter. So we'll go again at the top file new from template and let's create this time a background that's actually really easy all right so 
I have a lot of tabs open um, and I'm also doing a live stream, so I'm going to close that one. Uh, and I'm going to finish up showing you guys this. So this is again the iPhone app. Um, one cool feature when you're testing is that you get a list of all of the effects that you tested recently, like each build. So um, you could test, you know, the version from yesterday and the version from today and the version from five minutes ago. Um, here's one that I did previously, the Carpenter Soldier Wave. Uh, it's live now, so let me flip the camera. Um, but there you go, that's our guy who was waiting in our intro lobby. Um, for my upcoming game cardboard soldiers but again it's a very great marketing tool um, so create whatever you're you know you're doing just go ahead and create it here um, last thing i'd like to show you on my iphone let's switch accounts here um, basically is once you've uploaded that filter it's going to show up here so i only have one on this account i actually have them kind of spread out all over um, but this is kind of the final effect is that you get like this preview and you can basically click in and you'll see the video that you upload it. And then you see this try it button where you can actually try the effect and it will instantly load on that person's camera where they can take a picture. So it's really cool, it's really easy. Um, and once it's you know distributed in the wild, um, it's really accessible to anyone. They just need to go to this camera and let me see here. So again, these are some of the other effects that I've created. I'll just show you really quickly. And this one took, you know, maybe like 30 minutes. It took a lot more work, but definitely there are some really, really cool things that you can create that this involved no code at all. It's literally just art. I just kind of pieced it all together and it took some time. Um, this one was my first one, the pirate hat. This is a bubble breather one. So every time you open your mouth, you shoot out bubbles of different sizes um, and it also does the sound effect which you just can't hear right now um, but yeah that is the instagram side of things and to locate these on the regular you would just go to your story so you can uh let me go to my other story here and so you can see down here at the bottom actually you cannot let's see okay yeah so yeah, here you can see this is what it looks like on Instagram. This is how people will discover your, your stuff if they don't already follow you. You can actually just swipe through and try out different filters as they download. Um, so you know, try this out after this. Go in and just you know try and looking at all the different filters that you can do. Because there's so many cool things that you can do directly in Instagram. Um, and then once you get to the end of this list, there's the actual search bar. And so this is how people can search and find all those other different filters. So this is where you can search Safari and let's see what other people are doing. You know, this is a cool background effect. This guy has a face effect. I'm not sure what she's doing, but it's an effect. <laughs> and this is kind of like a cool hieroglyphic kind of cheetah print. So, you know, lots of cool things to discover. Um, but back into Spark AR here, let's try to build one more in the last little 10 minutes here. Um, so again, we have our background. Um, starting from the top, we have our device, you know, highlighted in blue. We have our camera feed. We have our focal distance. And then we also have our microphone. So if you want it, you could enable the microphone and maybe have the effect react to sounds or react to a specific word. Um, there's just literally so much you could do. Um, there's not enough time for me to teach you everything in one beginner course. Um, but basically, we can come down here where it says replace me. Um, so it has this person segmentation mask. And so this is basically the automatic effect to cut out this guy from his background. So if we increase the mask size there, you can see that's our mask. And that's basically what it's cutting out. We change the softness of that or whatever we want it. Um, and then from there, we have our actual background, which is our replace me material. And so in here, we can actually change it uh, to a different file. So let me add in a new one. Let's see, we'll just go to my photography. And maybe let's do this one here. Cool, 
and actually, yeah, let me just teach you the way they're telling you. So right click this one and you can do replace. I don't like to do this because I've seen it not work in the past, but they are constantly doing updates. Um, but basically in these templates, you just need to follow their instructions. You can right click it and go ahead and tap replace. And then with that replace button, you can you know locate that picture you want to replace it with. Hit open and look at that. Now we have a cool new different background. Um, and it's really that easy, everyone. It's you know not really too complicated. You can really get into the deep end of making something from scratch. But I personally would just recommend starting everything from a template because uh, these did not exist when I got started, and they're they're really cool. Um, there are a lot of really cool templates. I'll do one more um, because it's it's that easy. You know, I don't really have to upload that one. Um, so again, this is a world effect. So this is something that we can put into the real world, like that cardboard soldier you saw. And so again, we on the left side here, we have our plane tracker. So instead of a face tracker, I'll minimize that. We have our plane tracker, and this is tracking the floor. So this is automatically locating those planes like we talked about earlier. And from that, we're able to put this hole in the floor. And then from that hole, we have this animation that allows the heart to jump out and then spin around. Um, and what you'll see at the bottom, I can't believe I didn't mention this. This is what makes it all tick. Um, this is called the patch editor. And so basically you don't have to know how to program in Spark AR, but there is a cool visual programming language that's built in now. Um, they did not have this at first again, so this is a, another cool one. But you can see here that the plane trap finder, so let me flip it around and you'll see how it kind of goes through, or maybe not since this is the demo video loop. But basically, um, this one's really, really mapped out, and this is why I recommend starting from a template, um, because instead of code, you have these visual blocks that you can connect and say, hey, when you detect the floor, I want you to animate that heart and make it shit out of that hole, and uh, whatever else you want to do after that. Um, so this is how you can create a game. This is how you can create all these other things. Um, all you need to do to start working with the patch editor is you go up to the top and go, add sorry view and show patch editor right here i normally use this shortcut but yeah if you go to view and show patch editor that's how you quickly bring this up um, another thing if you're clicking on something i um, it usually will have a connector right here so you can create a patch directly for that one or you could take like this scale you could take this scale and drag it oops let's see you tap it there and basically that's going to focus. I see it clicking now. It's already in here. Yeah, so you can see here's the scale. The scale is already added into our code, our visual code. And from there, um, we can actually work on it. And, you know, maybe so let's add position, right? We have our position now and we could pulse our position and drag and drop this. So let's do it the other way. Oh, because it's already connected. Uh, yeah, so again, this is a, a template that's already preset up. I'm going to have to do quite some work in a little bit of time to, to reconnect that. Um, but basically, we have our template. You come here, back to that delete me box. Go ahead and delete it. And again, we want to import a 3D object. Maybe this time I'll do that Santa hat. So this time we will go to add asset and import from computer on my desktop should be this one we have our santa hat and so we'll just drag and drop this cube when it comes so again we're in our asset section not up here down in our assets we're going to look for that cube grab it drag and drop it and then drop it right on top of that drag here and now we have this cool Santa hat. You can see it's also spinning and kind of animating. So it's really, really cool. Maybe we want it a little bit smaller again. So 0 0.7, 0 0.7, and 0 0.7. Um, and that's another cool effect. So let's try this one out on our phone again. Um, quick time player. Let's um, and give it a second. Cool. And so again, we go to our Spark VR player. And let's back on the screen. We'll 
test it on our device, send it over, and there we have it. And so let me switch so you can kind of see what that looks like when it actually works, you know, when it comes out. So I'll point to the floor here. And your object will be there. Um, right now. Oh, and I was too close again, but uh, you see there's a hole in the floor. There's an actual hole in the floor. And from that hole, this Santa hat emerged, and it's just kind of spinning and pulsating. So that's a cool, quick demo of that one. Um, basically, the, you know, that's all you need to do, guys. It's I don't have to keep reiterating this. Um, we're right at the end of this, so this is actually good timing. Um, but basically, that's all you need to do. Download Spark AR, create a new one from a template, and go through and play with those. Um, again, CG Trader is a great place to get some assets. I will be posting assets on my website again, so that's nearfuture.marketing. Augmented reality today, right here, you get those free assets. Um, and another cool thing to mention is that this week I actually launched a new app. Um, so if you go to the App Store, let's go all the way down to the bottom here. And let's see all the apps. There we go. So here, 1001 Butterflies. This is a new iPhone app I launched this week. Uh, shameless plug since we're at the end here, but definitely check this out. It's a cool new app. It allows you to create more than 1001 unique butterflies and obviously uh, use all of these cool decorations as well. Um, if you've been to my meetups in the past, you've seen some of my work, um, but I can tell you this is extremely improved. Um, basically, I spent the last nine months not doing meetups and uh, working on my apps instead. And so I built a very powerful new engine. And uh, this is the first app that actually uses that new engine. So definitely, if you have an iPhone, go ahead and check this out. It's in the App Store as of two days ago. Um, but other than that, I think we will go ahead and check if there's any more questions and then we'll call it quits from there. Um, our next meetup, I think we should just do it next Saturday. I want to say like, oh, let's give it two weeks, but you know, I think we should just go ahead and just start doing this every week. So um, we will do that. I don't think there's any questions though. So that's it from me, guys. I will just let the music roll from here and wait for any more questions. Thank you.